Hi everyone, it's Jorik. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for continuing to follow and watch the stuff I produce. If you're new and you just found me, I'm glad you did. Please subscribe. I like to talk about what it's like to move and live in Portugal and some European travel news I sprinkle in as well. And for everyone, please share the content when you feel it is appropriate to do so. Today I'm going to talk about a few things regarding uh, some real estate updates that I want to make sure that you know about. So if you are, if you just moved here or if you're thinking about moving here, it's things you need to know. So first things first, um, Portugal has announced in 2023 for that year, rents are going to be capped at 2% as an increase. So if you're currently here and you're in a, a rental agreement, um, there should be no more than a 2% increase for the next renewal. So that's good news. Uh, if you're a landlord, not good news, but if you're coming to move here, many of you are looking for the D7, so you at least need a 12 month lease or longer, knowing that if you're renewing and you're only gonna have 2% increase, right now, if, I'm, if I have this correct, rent increases are tied to inflation so they should be almost five and a half percent as far as the increase so the government has gone through and cut that by more than half so it's going to be a two percent increase very beneficial for those of you that are looking to move here if you're investing and you're doing uh, rentals uh, long-term rentals that uh, is not necessarily good news but I wanna make sure you have that information depending on what your situation is. The second thing I wanna talk about is that they've uh, there's a recent article that says that Lisbon real estate prices went up uh, by 3.7% for the first two quarters or from January through June of 2022. And when you think about that, that number may not seem like very much, but in consideration of the cities that are above it which are the only places that it went up higher in the first six months of 2022 miami los angeles san francisco dubai new york new york city and seoul south korea i don't know about seoul all the rest of those places are extremely high rent living uh, and expensive places to live especially when it comes to real estate i want to make sure that you know that because as many people are looking at Portugal, often people maybe start at Lisbon and then work from there, or maybe they have their heart set on the Algarve, Porto, one of the islands, the Silver Coast, or someplace in between. Lisbon, as I mentioned in several videos, and you're probably getting it from other content creators, it's it's fine. It's pricing itself out of the market, although still economical by European standards for a capital city. It's just no longer becoming um, affordable either with the prices or the rents. So more of you have to, if you want to be in Lisbon or around Lisbon, you have to kind of travel 30 to 45 minutes north or south or east to get places that are uh, outside of the main city center and maybe even outside of Lisbon proper, if you will, to find something that's more affordable if you want to be close to that area. Otherwise, when I hear the names, Lisbon's in the same company as Miami, LA, San Francisco, New York, Dubai, I'm going, okay, I'm out. Even though we live here, that's just something that, that's not good news because if that continues, uh, Lisbon's no longer going to be an option for many people anywhere to move to. The next thing and the last thing I want to cover that I want to make sure that you're aware of, I've hit on several videos, I've talked to numerous real estate agents that tell me the 80-20 principle applies in Portugal when it comes to housing, meaning 80% of housing here needs something. There's some sort of renov renovation, upgrade, or addition that needs to take place, and 20% give or take, is new or newly renovated uh, properties that don't need anything. So many of you that are looking to move here sometimes focus on the new or newly renovated properties. We did the same. So we're focusing on the 20% of the properties that are more retail in price. There's not as much negotiation that probably is going to go on because more people are looking at them not as focused on something that needs to be renovated. And I just wanted to show you the screenshot here from a news article that was talking about housing conditions in Portugal. 
and comparing it to the EU. And again, I don't know where they get this information. Sometimes I, I, I wonder, you know, what the source is and what, how accurate this is. But they were talking about some of the conditions, leaky roofs, that some of the, the mold, some of the conditions that happen uh, in general in Portugal, and especially here in Lisbon, what people are dealing with that own their property or live in their property. So they're not expert, they're locals, they're Portuguese, they've been here all their life. And some of the conditions that they're living in are not the greatest. So I wanna make sure that as you're looking at property and if you focus on the 80% that needs renovation or needs something, those things that you're going to need to consider is when you're looking at a place if you're in an apartment building and it, there needs to be a new roof, how much are you going to be responsible for when they need a new roof? If it's a single family home, does it need a new roof or not? And how much will that cost? Things like mold, which are common in Portugal. We have a dehumidifying unit in our bathroom to help combat mold. Also, the units that we have that are AC and air units also have a function as dehumidifiers to try to help uh, reduce the dampness in our apartment. It's something that uh, you're going to have to determine and you, in some cases you might have to live with depending on where you are living. In other cases you can buy things to, to make sure that you are in a mold-free environment, but you're going to have to consider that especially when you're looking at properties that might be fixer-uppers, mold, roof, uh, construction issues with the walls, the infrastructure, the floors, are there going to be any problems? Termites, those are uh, things that because there isn't an inspection process here, you have to, you won't necessarily know termites unless you dr are allowed to drill into a wall and see it. Uh, but in many other cases, you need to ask many questions when you're looking to uh, invest in a property and also if you're renting uh, many people will choose to rent okay if you're on the the top floor what's happening with the roof is the roof okay if the roof starts leaking and i call someone how fast will it will it take 24 hours to fix will it take two weeks to fix will it take a month those are things that you you may not get a straight answer on but you need to be asking questions so you're more informed when you're purchasing a property or you're renting a property because much of the property here as i've said and other people have said as well needs help it needs something an upgrade of some sort so just the whole goal make sure you know what you're getting into as, as best you can without being actually a, a contractor and, and knowing the ins and outs of things and then also be leery if you're coming to lisbon i've said it lisbon's i think overpriced at some point there's going to be a bubble here but it just doesn't make sense for so many people especially if you're looking to retire and again um but if you are coming to portugal with that rent cap at 2%. We'll see what happens in 2024, but I think that's good news because that means as most of you are coming to live here and rent out a place as opposed to buy, you at least from a budgetary standpoint know 2% is a heck of a lot better than the 5.43% uh, which was going to be on tap for 2023. So that's the Portugal real estate news that I have for you at the moment. As I get more bits and pieces, instead of making one video on each, I'm going to try to take two or three or four articles and just make one video out of all of them, kind of like what I'm doing now. So as always, thank you so much for sticking with me and enjoy your travels.